What is the people? This is why I said you. And in this video, I'll be talking about ESP32 and I'll be showing an example of its usage in the later part of this video. So stay tuned for that. So let's go through the page. Now, this controller is made by Espressif. It has a hybrid Wi Fi and Bluetooth chip, high level of integration, low power consumption, and robust de design. So, we'll get in the details of that in just a moment. So, let's go over the details of this controller. So, ESP32 is a single 2.4 GHz Wi Fi and Bluetooth combo chip designed with the TSMC ultra low power 40 nanometer technology. It is designed to achieve the best power and RF performance, showing robustness, versatility, and reliability in a wide variety of applications and power scenarios. I went to the specs of this controller, and I gotta say, this is a beast. Like all the things that it has on board, like I would not need anything more or anything extra to get a few things out of this. Now, this controller can be used for IoT applications with around 20 components or so. It has an antenna switch, RF bond, power amplifier, low noise receive amplifier, filters and power management modules. Let's go over the key features. So this has Wi-Fi and hence 802.11 BGN Wi-Fi and it's about 2.4 gigahertz and supports up to 150 megabits per second. Next the Bluetooth. So this has a Bluetooth 4.2 and it can work with class 1, class 2 and class 3 transmitter without an external power amplifier. Now let's take a look at it at its CPU. So it has a Tensilica Extensa dual core 32 bit LX6 microprocessor with about 600 MIPS. It has about 448 kilobit ROM and 512 520 kilobit SD RAM. It has an 8 megahertz oscillator with calibration. It has two external 60 hertz crystal oscillators, two 32 kilohertz crystal oscillators for RTC with calibration, then two timer groups, including two 64 bit timers and one main watchdog in each group. Then if it Take a look at the peripherals that are embedded on the controller. Like it has 34 GPIOs, 18 12 bit ACR ADCs, 2 8 bit DACs, 10 touch sensors, 4 SPI ports, 2 I2S ports, 2 I2C ports, 3 UART ports. Whew. That's a lot. And it supports SD cards, and uh, it also has support for Ethernet. CAN 2.0, infrared, motor PWM, LED PWM with up to 16 channels and a hall sensor. Like, what more does one need? I can't think of anything more. Like, this just made my PCF uh, controller, which I had for servers, obsolete. I wish I got this instead of that, because that cost me about the same money as this controller would. Oh. Then for security, it has a secure boot option, 1024-bit OTP, flash encryption, cryptographic hardware acceleration for AES, hash, RSA, ECC, and random number generator. Now the applications. So it can be used in a lot of IoT applications for camera streaming, for music players, Wi-Fi enabled toys, Wi-Fi enables speech recognition devices, audio headsets, smart power plugs, home automation, mesh systems, industrial wireless control, baby monitors, variable electronics, Wi-Fi enabled location tracking devices, security ID tags. This even works with PID controllers and all. Like this thing was made to be a beast and it is a beast. It can work in the temperature ranges of minus 40 degrees to about 100 to 240 degrees Celsius, which I don't remember correct. So this controller was sent to me by Highlight Go, and hence I was able to play with this. And now after using this, I, th I think the only use that I have for the Raspberry Pi is for downloading different things and for running my VPN or the web server that I run. That's it. 
I won't be touching the GPIOs of the Raspberry Pi anytime soon. Because like this does it all at a lower power consumption level and with a higher functionality. And also as it, this is dual core, hence the performance is going to be on the top of its class. So now let's take a look at the board that I have. So this is the kind of the board that I have. It has enable and boot buttons and it works using a micro USB cable. Now let's take a look on how to program this. So like you can use Eclipse or you can also use Arduino. And I like Arduino IDE because I also got uh, an Arduino Nano V3 from Hired Go as well. And what I did was I had to install the library for ESP and I'll make a separate video for it. So what I did was I, I had an application which I worked on previously, which was using a potentiometer to drive motors or, uh, or something like that. So I implemented a quick workaround for it on the ESP32. So it was pretty simple. I, I had to define an analog pin, which was pin number 36, then the analog value as zero to start with. Same thing goes for the LED. Now the initial frequency, uh, now the frequency is 5000, LED channel is zero, resolution is eight, delay cycle is zero. So what I did was to, uh, for the setup, I, I set the baud rate to 115,200 and a delay of 1000 milliseconds just so that I could get the serial monitor up and running. Then, the, then I set up the LCD, the LCD channel, the frequency and the resolution. And the pin num and the pin that it is attached to, along with the channel, then LED C right LED channel and duty cycle. Next, in the infinite loop, what I did was I got the analog reading using analog read um, library or the command, and I got the analog value. Next, I had to get the duty value, and hence what I did was map analog value, the minimum and maximum values. And, and those things. And the last thing, LED write. So over here, I, I will be writing the value of the duty cycle on the LED. So LED write, LCD channel, as we previously defined, and the duty cycle. And that's it. And then I just gave it a delay so I could, uh, so I could just see it on the monitor. But if you want instantaneous values, just remove the delays. That's it. So let's just upload it. So to uh, so first, after you write the code, just verify it. Then just click on upload, which will compile it, verify it, and then write it to it. Now it's waiting for me to click on the boot one um, boot switch. So I'll just lo long press it, and it started flashing it. And it's done. So now all I have to do is just, okay, wait a second. Uh, I'll just show it to you in the monitor as well. So I'll just go to tools, seal monitor and all you can see is zero values. So if I just reset the pin, this is how it starts. All the zero values. Now I'll be changing the value of the potentiometer. And that in turn changes the intensity of the LED as shown in this video. Now there are a few issues with the with the ADC. That is, it has some noise, and 
Mm, the output is non-linear, but Espressif is working on fixing it using the code and hence we can rely on them. So that's it for this video. I'll be making a video on how to set up this Arduino uh, library for ESP32 in a future video. So stay tuned for that as well. So thank you for watching this video. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel. Click on that notification bell. And share the video. And see you next time. Tada!